I credit any consistency factor, concentration level, and of course independence ability, and focusing on internals of what's going on when I'm doing it, um, to be able to really hear it and sort of multitask at the same time while I'm playing to be able to hear the, inter the real details of the internals of the grooves. I credit all of that to Gary's studies. And like everyone else who was a child of the 60s, you know, I was a Bird Pack Rack fan. Because of the originality of the approach of the drumming, but the way that Gary Chester played on this record uh, was super imaginative, and he's coming up with timekeeping solutions that go beyond just play the right stick on the high hand, play this here. He's 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 coming up with parts. I was playing in the, in New York City with this band, this fusion band, and um, somebody hit me to uh, Gary Chester. You should take lessons. I'd already been studying with Alan Dawson. I practice eight hours a day. And I'm trying to like, oh my God, I got to try to sound like Billy Cobb and Steve Gadd and, and Steve Smith. And oh my God, I mean, I'm way behind, not to mention Bonham and everybody else. Like, how am I going to catch up to these guys? I was playing Beethoven's seventh timpani five hours a day working on my technique. Now I'm, what was I thinking? You know, I'm freaking out. Now you hear about Gary. So I go and take a lesson with Gary. They just said, no, he's great, man. You gotta, you gotta take a lesson with him. And I said, well, I'm already studying with this guy, Alan Doss. He says, no, 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 you gotta study with him. This guy's got something different. So I call up Gary. <laughs> he was like talking to the mafia. Hey, hey who's this? It's Kenny Aronoff. He says, hi, right, Kenny, what do you wanna do? You know? I said, well, I heard about you. I wanna take a lesson. Sure, kid. You know, that's what I got. When are you available? You know, we figure it out. Come down there. Guy completely cracked me up. I loved him immediately. It was this little guy, you know, Italian guy, smoking a cigarette. He's got glasses on. Really wanted to play the drums really badly, and my dad was like, you know, there were five kids in the family. We lived in a big, not in a big house, but a two-story house in Brooklyn with my uncle's family. And he's like, forget about it. no drums. <laughs> and I really wanted drums. So I had bongos and I had maracas, and I was like, I wanna... no, okay. So I got into the bass and everything, but I always wanted to play the drums, and later on in life I did get my own set and everything. In the middle of the 80s, uh, there was a gig that kind of transformed my international life, and that was Chick Corea. And I met this young drummer, Dave Weckler. I'll help you learn some stuff. And I had my sticks and my pad, and I'd bring them on the road. I always felt like, I don't have enough independence. I don't, you know, I'm, I have independence on the bass, but there's a lot of synergy and a lot of stuff that happens, and it's, it's different. The drums is, the drums are, uh, the most incredible polyphonic, you know, independence-oriented instrument that exists. So, he said, you got to get this book. He said, I studied with this guy, Gary Chester, and changed my whole way of thinking. I said, really? So I got it. I still have my book, see? And here I was on the, you know, one of the most important gigs of my life, playing with your career. I'd be in my hotel room with this book on the bed. I had sticks, you know, my, my left and right feet were on the floor for the hi-hat and the bass drum, and I had my... Uh, yeah, you know, and I had my hands for the snare and hi-hat or the cymbals, and he had me, I mean, it was crazy. I would work on my, my limbs and, okay, I have this rhythm here, this rhythm, this rhythm over here, there's four rhythms. Then it was like, okay, now you got that, okay, that's pretty good. Now you got to sing this other thing. 